The sequential code from last time simply blinks the green LED on your launchpad board. Today's challenge is to extend this basic architecture to also blink the blue LED available on your board. But to do it independently and simultaneously with blinking the green LED. To blink the LEDs truly independently, while preserving the simple sequential structure of the code, you would need not one, but two background loops, running somehow simultaneously. To explore this possibility, let's create two main functions, called main blinky1 and main blinky2. Each of these functions having the usual structure of the while1 endless background loop. With these changes, let's open the code in the debugger. When you run the code free, you can see that it only blinks the blue LED from the main blinky2 function. But let's place a breakpoint at the end of the Cystic Interrupt Handler in bsp.c. When you hit the breakpoint, open the memory1 view and dock it along the right side of your screen. Scroll the memory to the address of the stack pointer register, SP. Now, in lesson 18 about interrupts, you learned about the very specific stack frame generated by the ARM Cortex-M exceptions, such as interrupts. To quickly refresh your memory, I will grab the layout of the interrupt stack frame from the TIVA-C datasheet. I will then align the interrupt stack frame with your stack memory view, remembering to flip it upside down because the ARM stack grows toward the lower memory addresses. As you can see, the seventh stack entry from the top contains the program counter, PC. This value will be loaded to the PC register upon the return from the interrupt. So, for example, here the PC will be loaded with hex 40E, which you can easily test experimentally by simply stepping through the BXLR instruction and watching where the interrupt returns to. And, indeed, it does return to the address hex 40E. This is a regular interrupt return to exactly the point of preemption. But now, when your breakpoint in Cystic Handler is hit again, let's cheat and change the stack entry corresponding to the PC to the address of your main blinky1 function, which happens to be 7C6. When you execute the return from interrupt instruction BXLR this time, you can see that you indeed return to main blinky1. This means that you are returning to a different point than the original point of preemption. When you remove the breakpoint in cystic interrupt and let the code run free, you can see that you are now blinking the green LED. Of course, you can repeat the process again but this time go back to executing main blinky2. And indeed, you now blink the blue LED. Here, I need to warn you, however, that what you've just done is not quite legal and will not really work with a more complex code, as I will explain in a minute. But already at this point, the exercise allows you to make a couple of interesting observations. First of all, you can see that such switching the CPU between executing multiple background loops should be possible. Second, the exercise points you to the general mechanism for such CPU context switching which is to exploit the interrupt processing hardware already available in your processor. And third, the exercise illustrates the general idea of multitasking on a single CPU, which is to switch the CPU between executing different background loops, like your main Blinky 1 and main Blinky 2 here. So far in this lesson, you've been doing the switching manually, but the process can be automated in special software called the Real-Time Operating System Kernel, or RTOS Kernel for short.